Hey guys, my name is Mike and this is my introduction to stop motion animation. So this will be the first of a six part series where I'm going to be introducing you guys to stop motion animation. And you can record stop motion animation using an iPad, a tablet, or pretty much any kind of mobile device which has a built-in camera but also allows you to download apps. Firstly guys, just a very quick bit about myself. My name is Mike Byrne. I've been working in the area of stop motion for about 10 years now. I studied animation at Limerick School of Art and Design, LIT. And I also do a little bit of model making as well, which is an important factor for stop motion animation, particularly when it comes to creating characters and set, miniature set designs and props. Um, which is something we're going to cover in later tutorials anyway. Most recently, I have been running stop motion workshops in schools around Tipperary, introducing children to the process of stop motion animation and helping them create their own animations. And now I've been approached by the Tipperary Arts Office and given this fantastic opportunity to create these videos for you guys, which hopefully will inspire some of you to download these apps and get creating your own animations which could really be about anything you like. It could be about your school sports day. It could be about a bad hair day, a snail that lost his glasses, or even Anthony Joshua getting beat up by a kangaroo from Australia. I mean, it really is wide open, guys. And once you understand the process of how stop motion works, you can really let your imagination run wild. This could be a great project for you to take on with some friends. Maybe you want to do like a group project, or maybe if you want to approach it as a solo project, uh, it doesn't really matter, guys. It's still going to be fun either way. But first, we need to go back to the beginning because a lot of you guys will probably know what animation is, but you're probably wondering what is stop motion animation. Stop motion animation is creating the illusion of movement by taking a series of pictures of an object and moving or manipulating that object in between each picture. And then taking all those pictures, putting them on a timeline together, and when you play them really fast, it creates the illusion of movement. It's kind of like a magic trick, except you're actually tricking your own eye, <laughs> that makes sense. Because what actually happened is the images are moving so fast you can't register one image at a time and it actually creates a moving sequence for you. And this is, this is something that happens with all animation, guys. Every animation that you've ever watched. And even if you watch TV, if you watch anything on TV, it's the same thing. Everything is done one frame at a time. They're just put together and sped up really fast. And when you watch it, it looks like it's creating movement. It's similar to how a flipbook works. If you think about a flipbook, right? You draw a series of pictures on a flipbook and then you flip through it, and it, like when you're watching it, it creates the illusion of movement. Uh, we're gonna be doing the exact same thing, guys, except instead of drawing each individual image, we're gonna use the camera and we're gonna take pictures. And then inside the stop motion app, it's gonna put all them pictures together and create a video sequence for us. So this could be a very fun technique to play around with, guys. And if you wanted to make a good animation, you would be able to make a good animation very easily. But if you want to be able to make a great animation, it requires a little time, a little preparation, and a lot of patience. So there are many full feature movies out there that use the technique of stop motion animation, and they could take years to make, and they could have thousands of people working on them. Uh, movies like Shaun the Sheep, uh, Caroline, Paranorman, and The Nightmare Before Christmas, Now, before you guys get too overwhelmed, I'm going to do a little demonstration. And this is an exercise you guys can practice at home. As I said earlier, all you need is an, an iPad, uh, a tablet, or any kind of mobile device which has a built-in camera, but also allows you to download apps. And the app you're going to want to download is called Stop Motion Studio, and it looks like this. Okay guys, well I have everything here ready to start my demonstration, but before I do, I'm just going to give you a quick walk through the setup here. So we can see here, I have my iPad standing upright, and it's been held up with these two lazy arms. 
Uh, normally I only use one of these lazy arms, uh, but for the purpose of demonstration I'm using two because I want to be able to use the iPad when I'm doing this. Now you can use anything that will work here to keep your iPad upright and stay in place. The most important thing is that you keep your iPad safe from taking damage. One thing you could do is if you have Lego, you can use Lego and build a little holder for your iPad. Just be sure to use plenty of blue tack under the base plate to keep the iPad upright and keep it still. You could also use clay using a bit of scrap to create a hollow, then place your uh, some cling film in the hollow and then place your iPad onto the cling film. The cling film is there to protect your iPad and stop it from taking damage. Just see what creative ways you can come up with guys. So I'm also using these white boards here guys, they're A1 sized, but you can use any kind of paper or color paper, anything you like to do up your set. Um, just make sure that you put plenty of blue tack down to keep them in place. And you can also put some weights down in the corners to make it even more secure. I have my light set up here and it's shining down on my set. This is particularly co cool light because I can control the temperature which ranges from warm to cold. And this could be a particularly cool feature if I want to be shooting outdoor scenes and that kind of thing. And I can also control the brightness, which is quite handy as well. So have a look around guys and see what lights are available to you. And maybe you have a desk lamp, maybe you have a flash lamp, or maybe even the light of a phone. Don't worry too much if you don't have a light because you can still do this exercise without them. So now this exercise is pretty simple guys. We're just gonna be moving an object from the left hand side to the right hand side of the screen. Uh, I made this little wheel from clay and that's the object I'll be using. If you don't have clay, it's perfectly fine. You can use any object, um, maybe a toy car or some Lego or some kind of action figure or whatever. It doesn't really matter. You can use any kind of object you want. So now you can go ahead and open the Stop Motion Studio app and we're going to select this one here that says New Movie and now we can see our set. What's a good tip is to place an object in the middle of your set and then select this icon over here. Now by default this is set to automatic which means the camera will automatically change settings in between each picture which isn't ideal for what we're doing. So the simple solution is to choose manual, which is here. And without changing anything else, we're going to adjust the focus, which is this icon over here. And you can visibly see the focus changing on screen. So we want to set this so we can read the text properly and it looks clear. So somewhere around here. As I said, you don't really need to, need to change anything else, but if you want to experiment and have a look through these different settings, feel free to do so. So this button here is the shutter button and each time we take a picture they appear at the bottom. This area down here is referred to as a timeline. So when we take our pictures they appear down the bottom on the timeline. So now my iPad is ready to go and I just want to talk to you real quick about pressing the shutter button which is this button. You have to try to be careful when pressing this because if you press it too hard in between each picture, you're going to create a distortion in your animation, which won't look very nice. It's important that we keep the iPad as still as possible. So make sure it's secure using some blue tack and don't be shy with the blue tack as it's easy to recycle anyway. If you have a pair of headphones with a mic attached, you can plug those into your iPad or tablet and use the volume button to take the pictures. This is definitely the best met method guys because this means I never have to touch the iPad during the entire shoot and will give me a nice clean finish. I also have one of these Bluetooth clickers, they're really handy to get. Um, I think I bought this online, it was only like two euro. But you connect this to your iPad or tablet uh, via Bluetooth and you can just press this button and it just takes the pictures for you. This icon above the shutter button is called a timer. You can set it, your timer up to 90 seconds which can be really handy because you can get in, manipulate your object and stand back and then the iPad will take a picture and you can get back in and manipulate your object and then get back out and take a picture 
and you can do all this without having to touch or move the iPad, which is really, really important. The last thing I want to show you is this feature here on the left. Now this button at the top will add a grid to your screen, but don't worry because it won't show up in the pictures, it's just here to use as a guide. And the icon above that is called the onion skin, and the reason why it's called that is because when it's turned on, it leaves a ghostly view of your most previous picture, which can be handy when lining things up and making sure you don't steer off track. And again guys, it doesn't affect the picture you're taking, it's just there to assist you during the shoot. Now it's time to set some markers. We know that our iPad is positioned correctly, but it's also important to know how much of the set this camera can see. And we do this by setting a marker on each side. I'm just gonna be using these two small coins. I'll place both of them in the center. And what you want to do is look through your iPad or tablet and drag one piece all the way to the left until it's just out of shot. And we're gonna do the same thing with this one but moving it all the way to the right until it's just gone off the screen of the iPad. And now I know that between these two markers is my stage area and where the animation can take place. Finally guys, we're all set up and ready to shoot. So place your object on the left, just behind your marker and start moving it to the right a small bit. Stand back and then take a picture. And again, move the object a small bit to the right stand back and take a picture. The reason why I stand back is because I don't want any unnecessary shadows on my set. So I'll try to get out of the way as much as possible before I take the picture. So now we're gonna continue this process until our object has passed the marker on the right hand side. Okay, so it's taken me 52 pictures to get all the way across and about five minutes to do so. So there's a few adjustments we can make uh, to this sequence right now. At the bottom of the screen is this icon. And when we tap it, the first option here is the speed of our animation. So this is how many frames we're going to see for every one second of video. So if you took 30 pictures and you set this to 10, that means each second of your video will have 10 pictures in it and your video will be three seconds long. And we can see when we press play, the object moving from left to right all by itself. The best thing here is to try a few different numbers and figure out which is the best speed for your animation. Just try to avoid it being too slow to best create the illusion of movement. So I decided to do a second exercise. This time we're going to roll the wheel from right to left. I also made some modifications to the wheel turning it into a moon face. I know things are kind of happening fast here, but I'll be making a dedicated model making tutorial in a later video. I also gave this character some eyelids. I plan on having him blink once while rolling across the screen. I made two half eyelids and two full eyelids. And when I apply them during the shoot, it'll look like the face is blinking just to give a little bit more life to the animation and make it a bit more interesting. So when I apply them, I go half eyelid, then take a picture, then full eyelid, then take a picture, then half eyelid again, then take a picture. And it'll look like this. So now we're gonna do this second exercise, guys, and then I'm gonna show you how to save your videos. So I've started a new movie here, and you can see I've taken no pictures yet, this time we're going to be moving our object from right to left and you can see I already have some objects laid out on our set in the form of letters. This is just some text that I made with clay but if you don't have clay you can use whatever objects you want. It doesn't even have to be text. Just make sure that they're smaller than your original object which in my case is this wheel. So the plan here is to record the animation and then play it in reverse. That's why I'm starting with the text on screen. I actually want this to be at the end of my animation. Don't worry if this is getting a little bit confusing, it'll all make sense soon. Now we're going to be doing the same thing, moving our object from right to left. Except whenever the object, which in my case is the wheel, is completely covering one of the letters, 
I'm going to reach in and remove that letter and continue on until the wheel is completely off screen. This is why it's important that the letters are so much smaller than the wheel, so it completely covers them and they can be removed. In animation, this is actually called masking. Okay, so now that we've finished the shoot, this is how it looks played back. And the first thing you're gonna notice is I took a picture while my hand was still on the set. Not to panic, because we're just gonna go down here. We're gonna find that picture. Tap on it. And when we do, it gives us these options right here. And what we wanna do is you wanna hit this little one down here that says delete. And now it's gone. This is a common mistake when making animation guys and if it happens in the middle of a shoot don't panic just continue your shoot and at the end when you finish your animation then you can scroll along find the picture that has your hand in it and then you can remove it but at the same time guys definitely try to avoid this happening so now that i've adjusted my speed and play it back but i actually want this to play in reverse so what you want to do is you want to go back to your very first frame, tap on it, and again it brings us up these lips of, list of options. But you want to tap on this one here. This is the selection tool. And when we do, we can see that the frame is highlighted in blue. And now I can scroll to the right, and as I do so, we can see it highlighting all the frames as we go along. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all these frames all the way to the end. Then I'm gonna tap on this final frame and hit reverse, which is this icon over here. And you can see it looks much better already. But we still have one more correction to make because I want the text to remain on screen a little bit longer. And I've only taken one picture. So what you wanna do is tap on that image, hit this icon here, which is copy, and then tap on the image again and hit this icon here which is paste and you can see straight away now we have two so i continue this process and let's say we want to make five now that you've pasted five but you actually want 20 rather than just pasting the next 15 just like we did the previous five you can just select those five images like we did use the selection option. Now we've selected all five. And now we can hit copy. And now we've copied all five. And now when we press paste, it's gonna paste five of those images instead of one. So this is much better guys, and gives the viewer time to read the text at the end of the animation. Now I'm ready to save my video, so I hit back. And I can see my video up there, so I hold down on it for a second until I see this blue tick. Then I tap this icon on the top of the screen, the one with a box shape and an arrow coming out of it. I then select export movie, and then save video, and your video should be saved to your gallery. So that's going to be the end of this video guys and I know it was a lot of information to take in but once you download this app and start playing around with this technique you realize how easy this app is to use. Um, avoid Maybe avoid making the story straight away and just focus on doing short animations. Experiment with different materials, experiment with different settings, different lightings and just make really short animations. Um, and don't be afraid to make mistakes, guys, because making mistakes will make you a better animator. On the next episode, we will be making a Lego animation, and we're going to be using multiple scenes. And I'm going to be introducing you guys to some video edit maps where we can add sound and so on. Thanks for watching, guys, and stay safe.